Abe, I don't even know if we've ever done. No, we've never done like a on camera conversation ever. Never. 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 But I wanted to because I do think it's important people know the amazing work that you do. And when Thank I you. saw you out here, shout out to Kaz, shout out to his team. When I saw you doing the podcast, I was like, okay, I'm going to finally ask. I never <laughs> wanted to ask before because you're such a behind the scenes person. Mm -hmm. So this is interesting. We're going to learn about what you do day to day. No, I appreciate that. I think for me, it's just like, like Kaz or yeah. I've done a few things with it's people I actually know. So it's like, right. cool. Like I know you. Yeah. <laughs> in real life so it's like it's cool to be like alright let me go chop it up yeah. and we just have a good convo I think it's important I think where I'm at even in my life and what we do I think it's important to give a full scope of what we do it's not just the artists that come in here but there's a team there's there's a, there's a not, I don't want to say machine because it's not you're not a machine You yeah, you do mean, you know though. what I mean yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. like there's so many people behind the scenes that are working so hard to make it happen so that For was sure my focus in this conversation is to talk about who Eve is, you know? No, if you go on that. Wiki, they'll tell you talent manager, you know, of course, if you look up president of Dreamville, but it's like so much more than just that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even those titles to me are like, I, I never was a title type person. Like, right. You know, like those titles are like, just because sometimes you need a title. You right, know, for the people, paperwork. For the, yeah, for paperwork and for people. <laughs> yeah. But I never was a title person. Like, to me, it was just, I just came up in a, like, when you enjoy something, you figure out, like, all right, whatever needs to get done, we'll get it done. You know what I mean? And that's just kind of how I came up. And then titles come as as you grow. Right. But, uh, yeah, I guess, the, you know, whatever the titles are. Right. It's, it's whatever. <laughs> so, so what is that day in, day out lifestyle as the president of Dreamville? I want to start there. What does that look like? Is it getting up at 5 a.m., working out, emails? Like, you know, give us a behind-the-scenes yeah. kind of vibe. A year and a half ago to now is totally different because a year and a half ago we hadn't bought in. We, like, we went and bought in some some key people uh, like Candace Rodney, Damian Scott, Tori and Robinson, some people that really, like, helped us kind of structure the company in a better way to to kind of make sure it's running in a more efficient way. So before that, though, it was a lot. It was very stressful <laughs> because I'm not the most like. I don't want to say I'm. I'm not. It's not that I'm not the most structured person. Our company was a company built with like a lot of friends in a sense. And sometimes when you do that, it's harder to have like a clear structure. Right. So I would I would wake up and just kind of always feel like I have to like figure out how to get things done instead of like trusting that other people can get their job done you know right. what i mean so i had to learn that and that plus the you know the people we bought in kind of like relieved me of like the day-to-day -day, like stressing out over things and i think from there it was it's, you know it's just been a lot more enjoyable of being able to just focus on bigger picture things and then the things that that i love the most which is i'm always going to be hands-on with the artist music you know like that's kind of like my my passion that's that's how i came up like i'm not that's what i love to do is like talk to the artist you're like yo what if we put this song out first you should finish this song yo i had an idea so so it's a lot of times there's no real structure i wake up and i might have an idea for omen and i just call him i be like yo i had this idea and then that day we spent like three hours on the phone maybe back and forth you know so it always changes but of course there's always the emails and the stuff that you have to you know, deal with as soon as you wake, especially living on the West Coast. Right. Because you wake up, right. everybody's already up and running. You got right. like mad emails you got to catch up to. So so that part is always going to be there. But my, I try to focus on like, all right, let me, you know, let me get to the things that I really enjoy, which is always going to be the music. And like when we talk in festivals, just ideas. I like giving ideas and like trying to see them through. But, you know, day to day structure and payroll and budgets, I like, I hate that. <laughs> Like this. But you'll do it if you have to. I, I used to have to do it. Now it's like we put Ugh. people in place where it's like, but the thing is I was doing it without the real experience because I never had the experience of like right. what is like, what a budget should look like. Right. It's like I was figuring it out like, okay, well, this is what we need. Right. And we'll just go from there. So, I mean, a lot of the stuff that I, well, I was was me learning on the job. You know what I mean? Right. It wasn't like I didn't I didn't do an internship. I didn't go to school for this. So it's like budgets and paperwork. I was kind of like figuring it out as we go. But now it's like having the people that know, like, okay, well, you know, if you do this here, it's gonna affect when you want to do this here. Like, you know, it's just a better understanding. Now it's like I can give my input in a different way. 
what are some mistakes that you now know of and you're just like, okay, here's some things everyone can learn from. Don't do this. Yeah, I would say for me, the things that I had, I was never, um, like, first of all, I never, and I still don't, I never had an assistant and I, I still don't. I don't know, like, I just never under, I never knew how to delegate when I first, because, you know, I, I didn't know, I didn't think of it as like a, I don't think of it as like a position of power kind of thing, right? right? Like, I just think of it as like work needs to get done. How are we going to get it done? Right. And a lot of times, because I didn't have that assistant or somebody I, I knew to delegate to, it was comfortable delegating, it would end up kind of like allowing things to pile up. And then I wasn't, you know, I would, some things would fall through the crack or I would miss this. Or, and um, I think there was a lot of learning on, making sure you're on top of everything that I didn't know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I would let certain things slide. Like, all right, I'll get back to this a little later. Oh, and then no. and then those things <laughs> pile up. And I was like, hold up, you can't do that. Like, <laughs> so there was a lot of learning on the go with that, which was like, that was big for me. And I'm still learning. You know, there's still right. things, times where I'm like, yeah, I think I can get to that later. And then like right. a week later, like, I didn't, I didn't I deal do this? with this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's still learning, but that was a major thing for me. And then... um. And then because I didn't have the experience coming in, it was like a lot of learning what you can, you know, kind of what you can get out of these situations. Because right. for me, and especially working with Cole, like, it was always just about like, all right, we just want what's fair. Instead of like necessarily like the trying green. to rob the bank. And, and But sometimes you realize people getting over on you. So it's like a middle ground that you kind of, it's still about being fair, but, you know, understanding yeah. that part. Yeah, that, that that's some... Good insight because a lot of people don't know and yeah. it hearing budget, hearing payroll. It's like no, that's part of it. No, this for is, sure. People need to eat. People for need sure. to. That's just what this is. So let's go back a little bit in time. Like how did how did this all happen? Did you go to school for business? Like what? not at all. I went to school. Anybody that knows this, <laughs> like well, first of all, I went to school not knowing what I was gonna do. Right. <laughs> like most of us yeah. when we go to school, and then. And then I ended up, like, majoring in communications, which is kind of like, I don't know what I'm going to do, but, like, at least this looks like it'll be a degree I yeah. can use. I really wanted to do, like, sports management, sports marketing. And, um, and but, you know, I kind of was up in school. Like, like when really? I got to college, it was like, it was just the freedom of college. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't like, I would take a test and I would ace it. Like, that wasn't a problem, but it was like, not being in class, like, you know, just kind of enjoying time. And, um, but it wasn't bad. Like, it wasn't like I was just like failing out. But, um, but you know, one of the things I, I, I enjoyed about school was the relationships that, that you built. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, so I met a lot of people in school that I still know till, till, till this day. So cool. I, you know what I mean? Like, my wife mm -hmm. I met in school, you know what I mean? Obviously, Cole. So it's like, um, so it was more so the way it started was just kind of me and Cole was just cool. Like, we just hoop. That was our thing. Like, we played ball, and then we would go out to the city and party. That was it. And then and then one day I, I heard, like, some music in his car accidentally, and it was him. And I was like, wait. Like, I knew I would see him around campus, like, like at, like, a talent show, like, hosting, maybe, like, spinning a freestyle. But I, I knew, like, oh, yeah, he can rap. But, like, I didn't know he's a a gonna rapper. do it right yeah and and i heard um i heard some music and i was kind of like wait like you really like you really rap like <laughs> he's like yeah, yeah yeah but you know i don't like i don't like telling people because everybody say they rapping like i just kind of want to like get signed and then people to see and i was like yeah that, that sounds that doesn't sound realistic but right. you know but, okay. but at the time yeah exactly <laughs> but at the time it was just more so like that was my homie and i was a fan of the music that's all i knew so then it was like well what can i do to help you know what I mean? That's all it was. So, like, I would tell my friends around the way. And I was from Queens, and he was living here. So I would just tell the homies, like, yo, listen to this. And, and you know, everybody knows when, like, when you find a, a rapper that you think is fire, it's like a it's like a notch under your belt to tell someone else, like, yo, yo, yo let me put you on. It was right. just, it was literally just putting people on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but, but also, as I was doing that, I think I was, um, you know, I always felt like I had a good ear for music. So I think he just kind of trusted my opinion and and um and I understood the vision of what he wanted to do, I guess. You know, I was learning, but I feel like we were like minded people. So it's like our vision was kind of in a sense aligned, like we knew what we wanted to do. And um and even then I wasn't like his manager. It was more like 
yo, what if we do this? Like, oh, what if we go to open mic? Let's go to open mic. Let's just try. Like, you know, like just trying to. And then I, I kind of was like, yo, let's let's do a mixtape with all these songs you got, which was the come up. And that that kind of like kick started um, me just kind of being around. And then he's like, you know, he's particular with who he has around. But I would go to the studio with him, which right. like was like, OK, cool. So I knew that was like another step of like, all right, I'm going to start giving some input if I hear something or if I don't like something, I could tell them in a respectful way because right. I never like yeah. tell you don't tell artists like yo that's whack. It's right. like who are you like you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So so in a respectful way, like give criticism that I think can help, and and from there just kind of you know just kind of kept growing. Wow, this is and you never want to be an artist. Never like people <laughs> always make like crack jokes. Like I, one of my homies like I know you got some bars written somewhere. I'm like no <laughs> like like. Why I didn't, you know, like I I, I enjoyed okay. music, and and I just and I just felt like I had a good idea of what was good or not, I guess, or like what could make things better, you know what I mean? But I never wanted to be an artist. Like my, I, I grew up in a family of artists, you know what I mean? Right. Like my two older brothers was rapping. Um, my uncle was a musician in Sudan. Like then my younger brother ended up being a rapper. Like I grew up around my sisters. Like the oldest song, so she's the one that was putting us on the music and stuff. So, like, my family was heavy into music, but I never really, like, wanted to be a rapper, nah. No, no interest. Nah, I just, you know what? I just, I never put in the work to, <laughs> to be a rapper. <laughs> I appreciate and, the honesty. And, and to me, it's like, I just knew it was, I, I don't want to do anything, like, and not be good at it. <laughs> right, right, You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so, it wasn't, it wasn't for me, like... Meeting artists, you you see like the work it took. You know what I mean? Like, right. like just having conversations with Cole, like the point where he probably realized like I'm really gonna do this, and the work it took from when he said I was really gonna do this to when he got signed was ten years later. You know what I mean? Like he decided at 15 he was gonna do it. He got signed at like 24 or something. So it's like it takes work and and years, and it's like unless you're like the like during the pandemic, I was like, oh, I want to learn how to produce because because I do like. You give love music. input yeah. on, on, on production when I'm in the studio with people. And like I learned how to, you know, make loops and stuff. Elite was teaching me. But I realized like, oh yeah, this is fun, but this is not my this is not my true passion. So I'm right. not gonna spend hours and hours. I'm gonna do it as like like it's a job, like a toy. Like, right. oh, you just open oh, yeah. up my Ableton, you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? And and the thing is there's a certain dedication to being to getting to that level that you gotta really be like super passionate and dedicated to it oh, and, yeah. and, and and you know it wasn't for me so strategy behind an artist is wi your passion the strategy yeah, of I, helping them grow for sure the I think, strategy behind it i think it's i think it's the fact that like i've always i grew up in a family i was one of five so it's like I'll, i always attribute that to like the fact that like growing up I was so used to making sure everyone else was good. Like, I enjoyed that. Like, yo, if we was going out to eat, like, yo, I got you. Like, let's just go out to eat. Like, that was kind of like, so I think with artists, it was the same mindset. Like, yo, I just want to make sure you're good. And then it became about, like, well, how do you do that? And I think given my, I think my first passion is obviously being able to help with the music where I'm allowed, you know, where the artists want, want me there or want me to help. And then And then it's like, well, how do we get, this across the best way where it can connect because to me there's nothing like watching something connect right like once you like put out an album or a song and you can see like oh this is working like you can see people's reaction or see people be like oh this song made me feel like this like that's the best part so i enjoy it just as much as the artist so i'm just waiting to build it to that point you know what i mean like that's kind of like the fun to me what was that moment for you early on because, you know, obviously with your success, there's been many of those connecting yeah. moments. But early on, and you're like, you know what? I think I think we're on to something. It was definitely the warm-up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because because we was just, like, working on that and working. And then he got signed, and we just kind of, like, it was, it was a fun process. Because, you, you know, that was when my input initially was coming in where I could be like, yo, we should put this song on there. Maybe not this song. We should structure it so this way. Cool. So that was fun. That was kind of like, we didn't know, you know, what it would do or what it wouldn't do. We just knew, like, yo, we trying to put together something that we enjoy. And um, so I think the warm-up, seeing that and then being able to, like, 
see that reaction because that was the blog era so you see oh yeah comments and like two dope boys and not writers posting it and you're like damn what they gonna say like you know like <laughs> that it was yes. fun like yes. that was a lot of fun so that, that i think that was the moment where that was the early moments of like the enjoyment of being able to see a reaction to something that because the come up came out no one really knew about it you know what i mean it's like he wasn't signed like we was out there trying to sell it for a dollar in North Carolina just f- just for fun. So it wasn't like it was like a reaction, you know what I mean? The reaction came with the warm up and that was that was a lot of fun. Was there a moment where you thought, "Okay, let's not go get signed. Let's stay independent completely." Not at all. <laughs> not at all. Because you got to think back then, it was all about getting signed. Like yeah. getting signed was like a oh, oh you yeah. made it and like and and it was literally like I remember <laughs> I remember we always used to make this joke about how, like, because we were, we was broke at that time. Like, you know what I mean? Like, broke relative to my situation. My parents was there and made sure I was good. But, you know, like, we we didn't have, like, high-paying jobs. We was working, like, call centers and stuff. But, like, our thing was always like, oh, man, we, I think what kept us going is we always just believed the deal was around the corner. Like, blindly believe that <laughs> like for like a year of like yeah it just happened it's about to, you about to get signed like which keeps you going because the minute you start believing man i don't think it's gonna happen that's when it like yeah that's when it, it goes bad so now nah, again sound was always the point always like the goal. because now it's like there's more independent artists you could do it on. but oh, back yeah. then it was like oh you you on def jam you yeah. on this it was like this is dope. Like, yo, he's a signed artist. Like, right. it's almost like you got drafted in the NBA. Like, so, <laughs> nah, it was never a thought. Never a nah. Okay, okay. So, under the Dreamville umbrella, there's a lot going on, okay? So, Dreamville Foundation, Dreamville Fest, yep. Dreamville Studios. Yep. Now, I read Dreamville revived a basketball league in Chicago. Yep, yep, yep. Of course, you guys work on cold shoes, which I'm sure by this point is sold out by the time this conversation comes out, right? Yeah, I hope so. I don't know. All, I all the other ones have <laughs> sold out. The only thing that I'm not seeing on here, well, not the only thing, because I'm sure there's a bunch of other things, is like Dreamville sports area, right? Yeah. So what is next? I mean, I always, I got, I got a, everybody that knows me knows like, you know, in, in Cole as well, we're like basketball junkies, like we love. Oh, yeah. So we do have relationships and like play and you know, especially with the sneaker now, like we have new like relationships and and just kind of mentoring of different athletes and NBA players. Like that's that's a fun part of it to me. Um but to me it's like there's so much more that needs to get done with what we have. That, that's a lot, right? That it's like focusing on opening that up. It's like it wouldn't be fair to what needs to get done. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's like taking on like opening a whole new division and stuff isn't fair when the job feels unfinished right. over here. You know what I mean? So um, one day, you know what I mean? Like if if like things are still going how they going and we're inspired, like that that's a plan. But but it's cool because with the Dreamer with the Dreamer brand, um, it allows us to kind of like get a foot into to the sports world because we're dealing with understanding that world from a different aspect from a shoe aspect mm-hmm. but it's also dealing with athletes and dealing with their brand and ideas so so to me that's that's like a cool thing but I think the Dreamville sports one day but that's more that's more so going to happen when it's like okay everything is on this is on track all yeah, cylinders. Yeah, exactly. yeah cuz it is a lot sports it's, yeah, it's is, a lot it's, it's a different it's just a different avenue, not saying that it can't be conquered by you guys. And I feel like you guys would actually do really well for athletes for sure. But I I, I get that. It's yeah. important because, you know, athletes and just talent in general, they need that time and they well, that, need that's, that that's dedication. Where, that's, that's what kind of like always inspired us to want to do it is because we've seen, you know, athletes and players that we know or like that they don't have that team around them that's like right. – building them you know what i mean and yeah. and it's also like sometimes the those agencies and the oh. marketing company they just trash like they, they give like money and, and they, they take money to give trash ideas and then also to like to like they're not speaking our language they're not talking for us and it's not our voice so for for me it's like that's one thing that excites me is like one thing we can bring is the ability to like speak for for like you know, for them from a voice that they're familiar with, like that they understand. Um, 
not to be corny, but like, you know, forest bias, you know, like like Fubu said. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's something about being able to like talk to understand who the person is and being able to like maximize that. Like that's kind of what we do with our artists. It's never like you're going to be this. It's like, no, you're you are this. And let's try to like mm-hmm. bring that out and let's try to like maximize who you are instead of making you trying to be something else. And I think athletes go through that a lot. It's like. A lot right. of these marketing company agencies have like a certain way they want to do things and they bring the artist to that. Instead of being like, all right, this is who you are, this is what you do, this is kind of what speaks to you. Let's try to like let's try to nurture that and, and get that out. And and then the people that relate to, to you, the people that are like you are gonna really relate to you. You know what I mean? So that's kind of what's like something that I enjoy. Cause I still like have friends that I would, you know, have conversation with or give ideas and input for free just because it's fun. You know what I mean? So that's kind of like the sports Because you're a good of it. person. Because you I care. Try be, you're, I try you're to be. Very, you're, I mean, come on, Eve. You know this. I think industry-wise, people behind the scenes, you are, for me, my journey, are the most solid person I know. I appreciate that. And maybe Thank that's, you. you know, a uh, reason why I don't talk to many people in general no. because <laughs> your intentions you're very clear. There's no roundabout, which I feel like is a rare quality. You never see people like yourself get, uh, you never feel like, oh, good people win, right? Sometimes yeah. like if you're sitting back and watching like, God, why is it? Why does it feel like just shady people always win out here? But no, like seeing you win is very motivational. I know for myself, cause it's like, no, good people can win. I appreciate There's still that. room for good people to I win. I appreciate that. No, thank you. I think, I think that's just like, it all, you know, it all comes from like your foundation, you know what I mean? Family, like yeah. the, also I feel like we were blessed to be able to do this with our friends because it keeps yeah. you grounded. It keeps you in a place where it's like, you're not, when you get around new people, you, you know, like every, like you take on what they do or you take on, right. like we were around each other. So it's like, it didn't, it didn't allow, it didn't really give Cole a chance to change too much. Right. And he stayed grounded because he's around me or RJ or Mike or Adam, people he knows for so long so I think you know for me it worked the same way um and and you know I, I also just feel like this isn't everything so it's like mm. if 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 you know if, if the music industry and, and the industry in general is like is all you live for then you'll you'll be you know you'll be willing to be a person I feel mm-hmm. like when when you like I'm I like being a regular nice person in real life to people you know what I mean so so I think that's important and I, and I just believe in in good karma if you, know you I mean? if you weren't doing what you were doing now, if you weren't in the music industry, what would you be doing? Could you? I, even... I think it would be sports because that's be what sports? I wanted to do initially. Okay. I wanted to work in like a front office or like at a at an agency, like a you know sports like agency. Good ideas though. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> good good ideas on the agency. <laughs> or just because I I do feel like same way with music, where how I got into it's like I enjoy helping people get to their goal. Like that's fun to me. Right. Because you're a part of you're you're a part of the work that was put in. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. and you like when Cole drops an album, there's a pride in that for on my side of like, yeah, like I'm a part of that. You know what I mean? So like people see me in the street that know me and they talk to me like like it's my album. Yeah, yeah. But probably because they know they're never gonna see Cole anywhere right. to talk to him. <laughs> right. And I and I got I go back to Cole like man, people it's like when the off season drop, I'm like, man, this sh- is really connecting. Like people are really fucking with this. And he's like, man, I appreciate you because I would never know that. Like I'm in the crib. <laughs> like I wouldn't. I'm like, yeah, I know. I got to report back to you and right. let you know people like you. Like just the other day, he's like, I was like, bro, I can't wait for tour. Like these songs are gonna go so crazy because because my son listens to Cole album all the time. He's he knows the words and stuff. He's too like you know we got the clean version because you know. <laughs> Because honestly, while we was mixing the album, he was hearing the whole album. Right. But it was like the dirty version. Right. And you're then, like, okay, Nicole was clean. like, we need to get him a clean. I was like, hey, you're right. But <laughs> but I was, I, you know, so every time he wants to play it, like I hear it and I tell Cole, like, man, this album's going to go so crazy live. He's like, yo, he's like, it's crazy because because he's so disconnected. He's like, I don't even know that. Like, I'm just waiting to see it. Like, he, so to me, it's like, it's a, it's like people talk to me like it's damn near like his album because they know it's like the oh, closest yeah. thing. They'll get to talking to him about it, yeah. but I do feel a, a sense of pride in, in, in like when whenever any of our artists, because I know how much work got put into it. You know what I mean? And I know, and I know it wasn't, and I know it's done for the right reason. You know what right. I mean? Like so, so to me, it's like that's always been fun to me is watching 
something get to the finish line and then watching like like I think of like Ari when we signed her. I mean you yes, you remember I love Ari. We, Shout we, out to we, Ari we, she came to this show yes. like I early, love her. early. Early. Yeah. And and to me it's like to see where she's at now and it's still more to go and it's still more growth, obviously, for you know, for her career and for her as a person. But it's like that is fulfilling to see when you when you can help something, and I ain't do it, she did it, but we were all able to help something get from like a point that, you know, probably to her seemed impossible. You know what I mean? So it's like those things I really enjoy, and that's, that's like the fun part. Do people just come up to you trying to get signed to Dreamville, be part of the camp some way, somehow? Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so like especially if like I'm in a, like in a city like New York or... Yo, Eve, here, yeah, take my like, music, check but, this out. But to me, I always tell people like, yo, that's... Is that the way to do it? No, because it's funny because there is no one way to do it, right? Like, meaning like, mm. I... Every artist we signed was a different situation. Like, I can go down the list. Like, obviously, Omen and Cole knew each other from like forum days, talking about raps when they were I'm like in high school. This is so great. <laughs> yeah, they knew each other in, in, in Elite. They, they all... They all like came up together and obviously boss is my younger brother right and i was like the first two artists we had but like Kaz was matt mcneil who, who used to be our a and o who's a publisher now at pulse he um he went to school with me and cole and he just seen and you know he's from la and he's seen this young kid from la and he brought, brought it to us like yo y'all need to check this out and then like ari omen found on soundcloud and put on a song and then he and then we was like yo then like he put us on the Ari, you know what i mean like um, Irv Gang and Jid were on tour with Boss when he was opening up for Ab Soul and they were they were first of three so it's like he tells us you know it's like every, Luke came from Cole like scoundering the internet and like and then our 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 director that's done a lot of work with us, Scott kind of bringing it back up years later like yo this kid Luke so it's like you never know where the where it's gonna come from you know what I mean and, and, and what it always and it's not that you know, there's a lot of other artists that came our way that we never signed. But to me, what I always tell people is like, yo, it's not about, for me at least, it's not about like, oh, you can really rap really well or your voice is as strong. It's like, yo, does it connect? Like, do I feel something when I hear it? So, like, that's all it's about. And, and that's why there's no one way to do it. Because, like, you might go to a show, see somebody live and be like, yo, who's that? You know what I mean? Right. Or like, or you might go, you might be on, on a blog or something or you might be on IG and hear something and be like, damn, who's that? So to me, it's, it's all about like, does it connect? Is it like, does it, is there a feeling with the music? And I feel like that's kind of the, 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 you know, the through line with all of our artists. Like every one of them made us feel something. And it's like, from there, it's like, it's just trying to help it grow. Okay, so now you grew up in Sudan, Paris, and Queens. You yeah, know? Well, I, I, I didn't, I went to Sudan like every summer. Okay. But I grew up, I was born in Paris, but my family's from Sudan, so we used to go back every summer. Tell me how each place influenced you. Um, I think it gave me a, a a wide perspective of things. Like, I think that, um, you know, obviously my family's from Sudan, so that culture of is very much inviting. It's very much like big family, everybody comes out, they lay out all the food and it's always like about like family family come through hang out like sit around and talk and crack jokes for however long they do so i think that gave me like it gave me like the ability to to kind of be able to mingle in any in any world in a sense right and then i think being born in paris and and just seeing that side of things and and also having older siblings that I think that kind of trains your ear to to different things that, you know, that are more worldly. You know what I mean? Like between the music that my family was listening to, Sudan and and the hip hop that my brother and my sit and the and the you know, the soul and R and B that my sister was listening to and then the French, you know, culture of what they're listening to, like it almost trains your ear to be open to like so many more things. And I think when I got to Queens is when like it all kind of connected. Cause even though, you know, coming to Queens, even though I was, first of all, it was obviously a culture shock, right? When I when I first got here, it was like, all right, what the f is going on? Like, I'm like the little French kid. But the the one tying aspect that I had was sports. Like I played ball. So that kind of bridges the gap. 
Cause like you you don't gotta talk my my language to be able to hoop. You know what I mean? So that kind of was like where you make friends and you kind of get to know people. And but the thing about Queens is it's so d- diverse. It's literally the most diverse county in the world. So it's like that also trained me to be able to be able to move around all types of cultures. You know what I mean? Like I know friends in Atlanta that literally told me they never really interacted with a white person like of course they've seen him but they didn't have a real conversation with a white person to high school you know what i mean think like because they didn't see them around so to me growing up around black people growing up around white people growing around asian people latino everything like you get everything in queens i think that also teaches you how to like you know be able to be yourself around different people and i think that kind of carried me throughout the rest of my life because you know even boss who's his ear for music is incredible Mm -hmm. But it comes from my brother, my older brother used to listen to everything from Ice Cube to like Jamiroquai, you know what I mean? And like Boss was a Jamiroquai fan and like, so awesome, and, and, yeah. they, and my brother uh, Moma, who's like, you know, he's a big DJ, he used to like do all the like UK garage sounds and like all of that and like house, like so like it trains your ear to kind of like be, you know, just be wider. It's like a wider range of, of experiences. Okay, so I want to talk about Boss because he stopped by the other day. Had an amazing conversation. He's hilarious, by the way. We had a really good time. So let me ask you, because I asked him this. What would you say is a pet peeve about Boss? That You know, because he is your younger brother, something that you're just like, ugh. Uh, I think just because he's the youngest, he always had this like. (laughs) I'm going to follow you around everywhere. No, not that. It was more like a, I don't want to say like, I don't know. It's like, because he was the youngest, like, you know, the youngest always gets their way. Yeah. <laughs> like, he always got his way. It's like, right. well, I'm, I'm just not going to do that. And it's like, all right, man, let's just do it. Like, yeah. for, you know what I mean? <laughs> he always finds a way to get his way. Um, but but I think you need that. To to be an artist and to be where he's at, Right. I think you need a certain, like, mm-hmm. mindset that you're, you're going to get your way. But when we were younger, right. obviously it was a pet peeve. Cause I'm like, yo, what about me? It's like this little guy. But you know, right. it's cool. I think I think that was always um but I, I don't know. I, I don't you know, I've I, I guess that would be that it. That would be it? Okay. Yeah. Now, JD, if you could do me a favor and pull up what boss had to say about Eve. Now, let's talk about Eve really quick as a brother. Yeah. What's a pet peeve that you have about Eve? Eve, he don't cook nothing. He lo- <laughs> he let her eat. He love to eat. I'm always the one barbecuing. You know, he, like if there's a game on, yo, I'm pulling up. Like I'm, it's never like come to my house. It's like yo, I'm coming. Let's <laughs> eat some. So you know what I mean. But he couldn't scramble an egg if you gave it to him. <laughs> yo, that is all facts. <laughs> it's, I mean, my wife would probably say the same thing, cause I can't cook for. <laughs> but Boz, he chef up. Yes. So we always go to his house. And I bring the kids. They also like my de facto babysitter time. Like <laughs> I let them run around right. Boss' house, and he makes the food. Oh my god! But no, that's that's actually a fact. That's probably my my pet peeve for myself too. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't cook for. Shit. The other day I had to make pasta for my son, and my wife was literally like, "I'm gonna teach you. It's literally just put it in water, and then just you know right. rinse it out, and then put the the Alfredo sauce and just give it to him." I was like. Ah, and then I did it, and he liked it. And I was like, "All right, you made it." Step one. Yeah. <laughs> now I, I always like once in a blue will make something like. Yeah. You know, just a. <laughs> but that's that's funny because that's very true. The boss was ready for that. He was like, "Oh, I know exactly." What yeah, because literally, like last week, I probably brought the the kids to his house, and he makes steak and yeah. mushrooms and all types of good stuff. And I just be like, "All right, y'all." Yeah. I'm out. I'll see you later. <laughs> well, let me take a plate and then yeah. I'll see you later. Okay. I'll be back next week to do it again. <laughs> okay, so how about something that you admire about Boss? Um something that you like, something that you appreciate about him. I think I think that is to the to the same point I made earlier, I think it work kind of works both ways. I think he he uh, he knows. I always feel like Boss is thinking like 10 steps ahead. Like he kind of knows Specifically when, when it comes to working on music, because mm-hmm. every artist has a different approach. So Boss will like lay down ideas knowing that like, you know, it's supposed to like sound like this and basically like I'll get it to that point. Like and he'll like keep working on ideas for a while. Like he'll work on a song, like he'll make like ten revisions to a song, which to me I really appreciate because he's so 
one of his strengths is like his understanding for sound and like he can build like projects that sound very cohesive so i think once he knows that he kind of like builds it in like its own world and i really like appreciate that um because i think that's a talent not a lot of people have you know what yeah. i mean um but yeah but in 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 like life yes i think that is what i do uh appreciate and admire it's just it's it's kind of like you know we both have this like boss is almost like the he's like the glue in a sense mm. like he's the one that honestly cole was like that too like a lot of our like it's like the middle person that bridge, bridges the gap between a lot of different people. You know what I mean? Like, because people, anybody that knows Boss would be like, everybody loves Boss, right? Yeah. Like, he's just, people love his personality. He's like comforting. He's not like, you know, he doesn't, he makes everybody feel at home. Right. So I always appreciate that because he, you know, the ability to bring people from different walks of life and like be able to all have fun together. It, it's hard to do that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like oh, some yeah. people were like, Oh yeah, no. Yeah, it's very hard to do that. And I think he's incredible at it. Like everybody that meets him is just like Love, I love Boss. I love Boss. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think I think that says a lot because, you know, there's a lot of people you meet and you're like, mm -hmm. don't want to be around them. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, JD, I want to pull up the compliment that Boss said about you. And um I think it's important. I just I, I love both of your guys' energy. Now, as a very successful businessman something you admire about him um he's he's good with people but it's very genuine yeah. it's very genuine you know we're in an industry where it's a lot of disingenuous people mm -hmm. and a lot of you know just attempts to to gain favors right um he's the type to do a million favors and, and still like hesitate to call on a favor i have to tell him that i have to remind him that sometimes like look bro you got to call on favors on our behalf like you're the president of this label like you know what i mean like like respect your own power and the things that you've accomplished but he's still you know very humble um and just has very genuine relationships with people yeah i mean i i do appreciate that and i think that's uh it's you know that's just kind of like even what he said about the favors, which is funny, it's like I don't like asking people for favors. Right. Like, I don't like, because I don't want to feel like I owe you something. Right. And honestly, I just don't like asking people for, like I, I just want to get it there. But he's right. Like sometimes they would be like, yo, like, and, and I ha I've had to do it on behalf of the artist. Like I wouldn't do it if it was up to me, but I know it's like it's better for them. But. You know, I, I I mean I appreciate that because I do think there's something. I just believe if you're if you're good to people and you're respectful mm -hmm. and like you don't switch it because because I I've seen people here's here's what it is too. I've seen people who when they were their height was sh on everybody around them, mm -hmm. and then when that that height at some point it happens to everyone. It's everyone. gonna come down. Right. The fall off happens to everybody it's the end is happens to everybody and it's like when that when that fall is starting to happen those people you shitting on they're gonna remember that mm -hmm. you know what i mean and if you're just a good person which honestly that's not why i do it i just do it because it's to me it's harder it's harder to be shitty. you yes. know what i mean it's like it takes more work to be shitty. yes like it takes mad work yes. to shit on people so to me it's like i just rather just be nice and respectful of people and just do things because out of out of love, and then when you're on your way down, people not gonna just like try to step on you. You know right. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because um, because you know you were respectful and nice to them. I, I just that's just life. Like beyond the music industry, it's just like bro, just be nice to people. Right? Fuck. Like it's so much easier. Like, <laughs> yo, it's so hard to be angry and right. pissed and like it's and, uncomfortable. Yeah, like, just uh, I don't even know how to tell someone no. Like in situations, yo, I hate, I hate it. I, I hate, hate it. it. I have to like find ways around it. Yes. Like when Cole tells me like, yo, I'm not doing this. I gotta find the nicest way to tell someone. Like no, wait, like, wait. Ah, you know, honestly, uh, <laughs> it's like Cole's be like, no, nah, I'm good. I'll be like, ah, how do I do this? <laughs> just because like, yo, I don't, you know. It, it, but that's that's just who I am, and I feel like we want everyone happy. That's what it is. I just want people to be happy. We want everyone happy. We want yeah. everyone to win, and we want everyone to be happy. Yeah, which you know might be unrealistic but at least you could try <laughs> but we'll keep trying yeah, yeah, yeah. now i asked boss if there was you know any chance that we'll see revenge of the dreamers 4 
He said to talk to you and Cole <laughs> to make this happen. So here I am talking to you. No, nah, I, I do think there's a chance. I just think it's going to be about how we do it. Like, you can't do what we did last time. That was a moment in, like, history. The sessions, the way it came about. It was just such a special moment. And you can't try to recreate that because you're never going to do it the same. It's never going to feel the same. Right. Every it's like It's like sequels, you know what I mean? Like... Right, right, Every right. time you drop a sequel, I mean, there's been some good sequels, let me not. But <laughs> for the most part, every time you drop a sequel, it just don't feel the same. And and then it, like, loses. The, so it's like when a, when when an idea or a feeling of, like, how we can, what Revenge of the Dreamers 4 would look like comes about, then I, I'm sure... I'm sure it'll happen. I think I think our artists have only gotten better since then. The experience of Revenge of the Dreamers 3 helped a lot of our artists. Uh, it helped Cole a lot, you know, honestly. Um, and and I, so I do think that a Revenge of the Dreamers 4 would be a an incredible, uh, incredible time. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, Revenge of the Dreamers 3 was just... And that shit was hard, bro. Like, after... <laughs> After those sessions, like everybody kind of left me with like a hundred songs and ideas, and it's like I was sitting there for months trying to like put this album together, and like thank God the artists are like our artists were like engaged, like they would right. call me like every other day, like yo, so what you thinking? What song? Like I think this song, so it was dope, but that shit was hard, like it right. was. <laughs> but those sessions, it was it was being in those sessions that was like so magical. So to me, it's it's figuring out how we would. You know, cause yeah. cause it's hard when you when you do when you ha create a moment like Revenge of the Dreams three, and that album is still streaming, oh, still yeah. selling, still people still playing it. It's like it's hard to figure out how to get people, how to not ruin that moment by trying to like redo the same moment. Right. So it's like, I think that's that's really. Um, but you know, we got, you know, the most talented group of artists, so we'll figure it out. Yeah. Now, and when you're talking about that on three, it was the everyone flying in and out into the studio just for, you know, people who are watching. It was that experience of seeing the magic being created in the studio, different artists coming yeah. through. What was a memorable moment from that time? Was there anything that really sticks out to you? Um, yeah, when, when they were when they were making uh, the 1993 joint, which, which was like, there was this small room and Buddy was in there, Smino... Um, Kaz, I think Ian, it was a bunch of them in this small ass room, elite, all, like cramped up with weed and Jameson everywhere. And like the way that, that, that those sessions were, like you could be on a whole different side of the studio and not know something's happening there. And it was probably like four in the morning, we was leaving and elite was texting me a call like, yo, y'all gotta come to this room, like something special's happening. And we came in there and Buddy's like drunk, just cracking jokes, got everybody dying. Him and BJ, the Chicago kid, is going at it. And like Cole ends up doing like a verse and like Buddy's cutting everybody's verse off. And it was just like, to see that was like, yo, this is this is like what these sessions were about. Because I missed the other big moment, which was when they made Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. I had already left, but I seen the footage online. <laughs> The next day, I was like, this looks insane. Why did People I were standing on top of the speaker. I forgot who was on top of speakers. And it was just, I was like, damn, that looked like fun. But there was a lot of moments. Callie walked in there, and that was funny. Um, <laughs> Akon randomly walked in there, and everybody's kind of like, yo, is Akon here? Why is Akon here? Like, so it was just those moments of like, those sessions were, were a lot of fun. It was just like a family, real family vibe. Yeah. So out of all the collectives, it could be a hip hop collective, music collective, because we look at Dreamville as its own collective, yep. its own entity. Were you also fans of like, where did was there anybody else or I guess collective that you were a fan of what they were doing at that time? For sure. Like like the Rockefeller era was, was super dope. That felt like close to home because I was in New York. Um And they just the way they moved was, was cool. I really appreciated like um LeBron, Rich, Mav, mm. you know what I mean, Randy, that whole crew, I thought that was super dope. Like the fact that they just they just don't miss, you know what I mean? And, they, right. and, and the fact that, you know, that looked like, like us because we were friends and we came up together and we learned in the, you know, while in the game. So I, I always appreciated that. And then obviously like our peers, you know, TDE, OVO, like those, those are our guys. But I'm from Queens, so G-Unit was like oh. this. Waiting for it. G-Unit was the sh 
I was but, waiting for. But G- I was never like like G Unit was, a, but it was also like it was gangsters. And I was just you know I'm I was like damn these all brolic they went why I couldn't see that for me you know what I mean I couldn't see myself getting shot nine times and wearing a white beater but I but they were my favorite because for Queens it was a moment and like they used to come to a high school game because our, our star player was like from one three four one that from that area so like. Banks and Yayo used to come to our games, and I, I and we were young, looking like, cause this is like mixtape day, like, damn, he's at our games, like this is so cool. But that that was a big moment. But um, yeah, I would say G Unit, and and cause cause even like Death Row, like I was I was a huge fan of the artist, but one I was in the I was all the way here, right? You know what I mean? Like the lifestyle was so different to me. Like I did not understand the West, like the West Coast lifestyle was like, uh, even though Pac is like one of my favorite artists ever, the lifestyle, the the, the it was like watching a movie at all times. <laughs> I'm like these in a movie, like I can't, like you know what I mean. So, but um, but I think that we took, I I think you take inspiration from everybody, you know, a little bit from everybody, and then you try to find like, all right, what's our, like what's our, what makes us different, you know what I mean, um, but you know. That that's kind of like the roundabout answer. <laughs> yes. Yeah, G Unit was. Okay, so one word to describe every artist on Dreamville. Okay, so we could kick it off. Let's start with Boss, since you know that's family. But one word. One word to describe every artist. All right, one word for Boss. I would say it's not one word. It's, it's really two words, but him and Kaz. Uh. The party boys. That's what we, that's what they call themselves. The party boys. Him and Kyle. But now I think boss. One word to describe boss is um. I think he's the glue. He's the glue. The glue. He was always the glue. I think in the label, mm-hmm. he kept all the artists. Like even in those those revenge sessions, he quarterbacked that Costa Rica song. Like he's just the glue. Mm-hmm. So I would say for boss the glue. Cole. Cole is. One word to describe Cole. He's different, <laughs> you know, in a good way. Like, I just think that he's he's built different than, than anybody else I've ever met. Like, his his vision and his, like, work ethic and, like, how how he approaches things, he's just different. And he's just also different. Like, you know, he's just at home. He's literally the, the anti of everything you would have thought a superstar of his caliber would be. You know what I mean? Right. Like, he just wants to be home with his family. I love it. Like, but then he'll come out and do an arena sold out and, and rock it. Like, so right. to me, it's, we, I always, I always tell him like, yo, like, I always be like, damn, you know, you really, like, you beat the game. Like, you, you got to a level that very, very few rappers have gotten to, but you did it in a way where you didn't lose yourself. You know what right. I mean? Like, integrity. So you beat the game. And, and to me, so different. I think he's just different. Like, he's different. different. Yeah. How about Earth Gang? They different for a different reason, but <laughs> but Earth Gang, I think for Ian is I would say free, okay. like he's just a free, like he's just free spirit. Yeah, he's a free spirit, but it, it's what makes him so fun to be around and and always like, you know, even musically he just tries things, like he'll just you know, and then Olu, I would say, like first of all like he's just one an extreme talent right i don't even he has so much talent i would say um i would i would say i don't know if it's a way to describe him but one one thing i i would say is like his dedication right like he seems so dedicated to it like you know like to his craft to mm-hmm. to to just figuring it out you know what i mean and even the, the tools he's added as an artist from when I met him to now is crazy. And I feel like that's just his dedication to just always get better and always mm-hmm. elevate. As a person, too. You know, that's he's, awesome. I love that. As a that. person, he's he just always growing. And and that's what makes them special. Is like, you know, Ian is like this free spirit who's just like living his life. And, and like, of course, he's not just a free spirit. Like, he just doesn't know what he's doing. But I mean, like, and then Olu's just like tunnel vision dedicated. And it's cool. Because when balance. they get together, it's a great balance. How about Omen? Omen is, he's like, 
I guess I want to say like I almost feel like he's a genius that doesn't even know how much of a genius he is if that makes sense <laughs> yes, like yes. I feel like there's a lot that's so untapped in Omen because he'll do things sometimes I'm like oh my god like but I don't know what the word is um I don't know what the exact word is but I, you know I think that he's untapped I don't know untapped, untapped yeah 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 no, I, I feel like there's so like as much as people know how talented he is like he does things sometimes I'm like damn there's even more in there not just as an artist even like he's writing scripts like all types of stuff untapped that's a good like word. so i would say untapped yeah I'll that's a, that. no that's a good one how about ari ari man she's a sweetheart but i don't know if that's a word just to describe her i think ari is i think the word i would use for her is growth because i feel like i've got to watch her grow not just as an artist but in her life you know since we signed her and I feel like she's taking the steps on her own to just keep growing. I love that. So I, I love, I, that's my favorite part of Ari is watching the growth mm -hmm. and, and being able to be like, oh man, like you really, you know, even when there's like a setback for her mentally, emotionally, she knows how to like deal with it better now than she did five, six years ago. So I think, you know, as a person, I think the, the her growth, yeah. How about Kaz? Kaz is... Um, he's it's funny because he's like he's so, still so young <laughs> like it's so crazy to me because he's been signed but he's still so young it feels like like he makes me feel old but um for Kaz I would say like his his energy like he has energy. good energy like for, with me you know what I mean like mm -hmm. of course you can't talk about like how he is but with me it's like he always gives off a good energy. And I think I think what Kaz, I would say, honestly, is, I don't know if this is a good word to describe, but he's, like, receptive. Like, he's really good at, like, I, receiving yes. input. He's really good at, like, receiving, like, feedback. He's really good. And, and that's important. Like, yes. as, not only just as an artist, as a person. And I always appreciate that about him because, like, he he wants your input. He wants your feedback. And he's good at, like, trying to implement it you know what i mean and yeah. i think he's someone that i've watched grow he's someone that's still growing that's got a lot of growth ahead of him but he's receptive at like from you know hearing what people you know feel about people that he respects you yeah. know what i mean so i think that's i think that's like an important trait oh, yeah. that a lot of people don't have and, sure. and that you need luke man that guy i want to say um like visionary because I do think he has the clearest vision of who he is and the clearest vision of what he wants to cut through. And him and his team, they always, like, find a way to get it there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and, and on his own time. Like, like, he won't rush things. He won't, like, he just, like, always, like, moving at his own pace. And I feel like he has a clear vision of who he is and what he wants to get across and he's really good again and getting that done so i think he's like visionary that's strong jid i think he's an alien <laughs> uh yeah he's an alien like but i mean that in in the best of ways i think he's just like you see it in the way he puts his songs together the way he works you're like yo i'm like it's like watching something that you haven't seen you know what i mean um I think he's I think he's that I mean I I I feel like you know that's just kind of like a, a joke saying that you know like that he's an alien but I think that I say that in a way of like in the same way I said like Cole's different you know he's a, he's a different kind of dude like as an artist even as a person his name JID came from the fact that his grandmother used to call him jittery and like if when you're around him you see he's very like like, his brain is always moving. Like, that's why I say alien. Like, his brain is all, like, he has thousands of ideas. Like, he'll start an idea, leave it, come back, like, leave it, just never play it again. Like, he's always constantly, like, I feel like his brain is constantly in, in overdrive. And I think that's why he's so incredible. And I think that he's going to be even more incredible when he's, like, hits that point where he controls that. Like, you know, like, control the 
when you want to be in overdrive and when you want to like. That's an art. That's, that's an, an art. art. That's hard. And that takes. And time. I think that's what he's doing now. Oh, that's good. I think that's what he's doing now. I think he's figuring out as an artist and as a person, like, you know, like it's like I remember uh, was it Stephon Marbury? Somebody, I think somebody told Stephon Marbury, like you're you're always playing at a hundred miles an hour. Like you're really gonna be good when you're gonna know how to when you're gonna be able to control your pace. Mm. And I think the revenge sessions when I first started seeing, um, and actually the project, um, DiCaprio too is when I started seeing like him understanding how to control his pace. But um, I think yeah he's a, he's an alien because I don't think there's another one like him. Yeah. And and I mean that in the best of ways because he's just a talent and it's just even as a person, he's he be having ideas for scripts, <laughs> ideas for everything. Like he's just that's that's. That's Jim, man. He's he's special. We got to get that for Dreamville Studios, cause that's what the studios is for, right? Like, yeah, well, that's a lot of the ideas we're we're building, you know, through through studio, um, and I think, you know, I think for me, it's like all these artists in their own right have had like gr a lot of growth in their career, but it's just a certain place where I want to see them get to. Yeah. Before I can really start focusing on other things, you know what I mean? Yeah, like you I want to see them yeah. get there, and and that place is different for everyone. You know right, what I mean? Right. Because it's all about what you want. It's right. all about like you can't dictate what someone should want for themselves. Um, but yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, no, I I love that you care about the dedication of taking your time because that's important. And every artist, especially because you believe in them, yeah. deserves that attention. No, nah, for sure. I think that's that that's like the that's the fun in the work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is being able to put that work in for for that specific artist and seeing them get to a place that they wanted to get to and just being able to help them get there. Because yeah. at the end of the day, it, it starts and ends with the artist. And I, and I always try to tell them, like, yo, you got to have a vision for yourself. Yeah. Like, we can't create a vision. Right. Like, because then it's not going to feel real. Right, right. You got to have a vision for yourself and then... As a group, we could all be like, ah, how do we maximize that? How do we, you know, make sure that vision cuts through? You know what I mean? But if it's like, like an artist can't think that you just make the music. If you think just making the music is it, you're going to get lost in this world of a thousand, five hundred thousand songs coming out every month. You know what right. I mean? Like something has to has to cut through. And it usually starts with people relating with you, like I, I, like the reason Cole is where he's at. Obviously, he makes incredible music. Obviously, he's one of the best we've seen. But it's like people connected with him, yes. and people grew with him. That's also what Pac had to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like there was a certain connection with Pac, and people grew with him. And 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 you got to see his mistakes. You got to see his high times, his low times. And when you do that, like you can go as long as you want. You know what I mean? But when you're playing a role. Ooh. That's gonna is gonna end quick. Eventually. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Because it's because not you. because yeah, it's not you. You can't keep growing in that yeah, position. And you can't keep doing that forever. Yeah, exactly. And I think um, that's why I think you see a lot of people who like have like these quick rise to stardom and then a quick fall because it's like it was empty. You know what I mean? Um, so to me, that's 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 really it with the art. That's the fun part. It's like how do you maximize who you are and and what you want people to know about you. And then going from there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think a big reason Ari is where she's at is because people got to know her with her IG lives, good or bad. There were some people that disliked her for it, but it's like, that's a part of life. Not everybody's going to love you. Not everybody's going to agree with you. But what she did is she gave herself. And then it's like the people that loved her, they, they all ride with her forever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because they see themselves in her. And, and um, that's the same reason we signed it, because we seen, like, I looked at it, I was like, man, you feel like someone from back home, someone I grew up with, someone, like, that feels like like I can pinpoint, like, you know, times where I, I've, I was, like, you feel it's like a comfort of, like, you're not trying to be someone you're not. And people, like, really relate to that. People really love that. And I think that um, that's important for all artists, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, yeah, that's, that's kind of, like, the joy of seeing that through. So this is a fun game of rapid fire questions, but it's the Queen's edition. Okay? okay. So we even did this with Boss. We had a great time. And yeah, we'll just have fun. Best slice of pizza in Queens. 
Ooh, for me, it's Romeo's. I know a lot of people would say, like, Gabby's um, pizza, but for me, it's Romeo's because they got this chicken Caesar slice and it's slamming. When you come back home, do you stop by? Do you have to go? I have to. There's two things I have to eat when I come back home. Hillside Deli. That's always the first stop. I get the chicken Philly from Hillside. My mom gets so mad, right? Because <laughs> my, my, you know, my parents' house right by the deli. And when I land, I go to the deli, get my sandwich, then go to my parents. She's always like, I'm always cooking this food. And you always bring this, this, this food. Like, you know, she's just so mad. I'm like, you have to understand. Like, so when I, when I landed and I call my dad, I'm like, hey, I just landed. He's like, oh, you're in New York? I'm like, yeah, I'm about to come by the house. I'm like, tell mama don't cook. I'm, I'm getting Hillside Deli. He just, my dad just started laughing. <laughs> Because she's always like, you guys always want to get junk food. But I'm like, yo, it's, it's nostalgia, man. I've been getting this yeah. for years. <laughs> so that and then Romeo's Pizza. Okay. I guess this is going to be tough. But five most influential artists out of Queens. Nas. 50. Nikki. Nas, 50, Nikki. Q-Tip. Yeah. I, I'm, I think I'm going to say Nori. Oh, damn. Okay. Because Nori was different. Like, he had his own vibe. He, own he energy. wasn't. Yeah. He had his own energy, I feel like. And, and yeah, it was something special about it. And then, even what he's doing now, you know, with his oh, podcast, yeah. it's like he transformed himself into, you know, so I think, I think, you know, of course, yeah. So to me, it's like most influential. I feel like he has a lot of influence. Um, but it's tough. You know, I think, I think you could say like Farrah Manch in there. Like, he's, you know what I mean, a legend. Um, no LL, reason. obviously, you know what I mean? LL, like, for sure. Like, if you go back, that's what I was saying. If you go back, you can say Run DMC. Like, Ja Rule was influential. You're like, you know what I mean? There's a lot of, you know, Queens, we got a lot of we got a lot of good ones. Yeah. Um, I'm sure I'm missing somebody. Lost Boys, for me, that was my era, you know. <laughs> Shout out to Lost Boys. <laughs> yeah, man, the Queens was, was hot. One way you could tell someone is from Queens... If they say big queens energy or big queens, if they say big queens. You're like, ah, you really from Queens. But uh, I guess one way is really in the way people talk. Like I feel like you can tell when someone's talking, like what borough they from. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and and Queens is always coming up with like their own. Like I I say it all the time. Like lit started in Queens. That's a fact. <laughs> lit like Queens. The first people saying lit. Obviously, if they say big queens, that's that right now. You know, I was in a party last night. It was on the mic like big queens. I'm like, oh yeah, we, we yep. are, we we here. <laughs> but uh, but I think I think I think um, I think that that to me is the is the like the way people talk in Queens. Yeah. You could tell, like I can tell somebody from Queens or somebody from the Bronx, somebody from Brooklyn, or somebody from Harlem just by how they talk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. I don't know anybody from Staten Island like that, so I'm not going to... So you're not even... Actually, I do know some people from Staten Island, but yeah. Well, Eve, I had a great time talking with you. I, I appreciate had, I had you making time the time too. to, you know, have this conversation to give us some insight, some great, you know, perspective when it comes to music. You know, nah, and so many that. artists are looking for that kind of insight and also to learn what you do behind the scenes. And it's a reminder to artists and people who want to work in this field that it does take a family it takes a lot of people to for make sure, it happen for sure. it doesn't happen overnight you know and i think reminding everybody of that is important you know it just for sure don't believe what you see on the reels and the highlights on the ig it takes a lot of time nah, to get sure. to that point for sure that's real and i think i think that you know people always ask me like oh i'm trying to find a manager i'm trying to find a manager or whatever and i tell them like a lot of times that person is already around you you just like i always tell people like cole gave me a shot he didn't have to you know what i mean like of course i added something i bought value but he didn't he could have went to any like you know big name manager especially like once he uh once the you know the, the relationship with mark mm -hmm. i mean not their relationship because their relationship is just good as ever but once they're bit like once mark wasn't managing him anymore he could have went anywhere you know what i mean but but obviously he gave me a shot and, and he's he's he has a lot of control over his own career. But to me it's like what that taught me was that person might already be in you know, in your circle because the people that really care about you and they're passionate about this, 
they're going to figure it out. They'll run through a wall for you, right? That's but right. there's going to be some bumps because there's some learning they got to do. But if you believe in that and, and, and if that trust is worth more than a couple of mistakes, then at the end you'll be like, all right, we're in a good place. So I do think people need to look at the people that care about them mm-hmm. and see if they – because not everybody that cares about you has the, the talent the and, the, drive. and the drive to figure it out and do it. But if they have those things, I believe in that more than just like, oh, let me go to this management company. Right. You're just going to look at me as like another number on the board. You know what I mean? Uh, which is the same reason why I tell people like I would never – I don't plan on ever managing another artist because like, I'm not going to give them the dedication and the time mm. or do I even have it in me to, to go through what, what we just did the last 12 years and like how much work and how much dedication and time it was. I can sign artists to a label where I can treat them like I'm managing them and, and be there very hands on, but they have their own team and their I own managers that. that are like, cause, cause to me, if you're a manager and you really, like, you should be waking up every day thinking, like, okay, I need, like, how can we, like, what can I do to add? You know what I mean? Like, so I think with Cole, it's like, I'll be driving sometimes hearing some songs, like, even just the other day, like, songs that 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 we're still working on. I'll be like, yo, I was thinking, blah, 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 if you, like, this song, like, it could go with this one. And he'd be like, bro, I'm not even thinking about that right now. But it's like. I got to get my drills in. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to go. I'm going to hoop right now. I'm going to go do my runs. But, I, so, but to me, it's like, can I do that with someone else? I Probably know. not. I could do it with the artists we have signed. But I could also sometimes worry about something else, knowing their own management and their own team is always doing that for them. So that's so to me, it's like, I think that's, you know, some. I, I think the appreciation that I have for you is your honesty to even say that. Because, you know, we work in a field that it's money for a lot of people. It's money driven. They'll say, yeah, I'll take you on. Yeah. I'll help manage you. They'll take money and you'll get they'll say, oh, I got this and this. But really, a lot of times I feel like artists create a lot of opportunities for their self. So for you sure. have to be able to distinguish. Did this person bring value and a for different sure. opportunity sure. that I couldn't get myself. You know, those are important questions because that that could be your livelihood. That no, percentage sure. could really take you to a place that could mean fact. paying your bills and not paying your bills. Yeah. Right? No, that's real because even with me, like I tell people like, or even with Cole, like my value to Cole as his manager is more so on the, create, the creative and ideas and you know, putting these albums together, tours, whatever. Like, the opportunities that come, they were going to come if I wasn't here. You know what I mean? And anything I add to the table when it comes to opportunities or deals, they go through him and me anyway. It's not like right. I, like Cole's not that guy that's like, yeah, yeah, do whatever you want. No, Cole's like, wait, how much? No, what? No, I need this. Blah. Like, he's very hands-on. So it's like, it could have been someone else. What I what I bring to the table is, you know, something that's more on the, on the creative side and the vision of the whole thing, but you're right. To, like artists need to know that. Like I, I very much know that Cole knows that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But when artists don't know that, it's like yo, that that's coming anyway. Like right. that sync was that they, they, they saying they got you was probably coming through anyway from it was gonna from Madden. Madden was probably reaching out anyway right. to put your song in the game. But you know, some managers take that they'd be like yo, I got you in Madden. It's like Come on. you're just trying to take credit. Like and it's, it's like for what? You for know what? what? Yeah. And also, last thing, I think, Eve, to your point, being down to do anything. So if you find that person within your team that cares for you, loves you, and willing to just, you know, do whatever it takes to see you win, it's also realizing that sometimes you're going to have to drive the car. Sometimes oh, you're yeah, going to be... I've had every job. Like, literally. Wait. I DJed. I, okay. Wait, I got to ask you this. Did you DJ a summer jam? Yes. First? Yeah. So Wala, who's in the studio right now running my show... He was like, no, Nessa, I saw him. I, and yeah, I was like, and, and, and it wouldn't work. Yes. The, the, <laughs> the, the equipment. The, the equipment wouldn't work. Cole had to come out and do but Simba. But Cole kept going, though. He did a cappella. Yeah. And he looking back at me like, what's going on? And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I'm not a DJ, bro. <laughs> like, why am I here? <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, I, I DJed. I've, uh, me and Mike we was real security. That's what we called it. Because Cole had a, a number one album in the country with no security like he it took him so long to realize like all right i need security 
but after shows, me and Mike had to move the crowd like, yo, watch out. So I did, I did security. I did a B roll. Shout out to Mez. That's all, that's always our joke. I used to like shoot back in this. the days and like edit my little own sh- and put it up on YouTube. And like call in the studio. I did A and R. I did management. I did Whatever. I don't know road manage. I did I I booked I booked parties. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but I I enjoyed all of those moments. You know what I mean? It's like it's just fun in there. Like, like yo, what you want? <laughs> like I, I'm pretty sure every, I'm pretty sure everyone on our team at some point made a, a Macy's run to pick up boxes for Cole. Like it was like, yo, I need some boxes on tour, and be like, yo, blah blah, it's your turn, yo. Like, because another thing is he doesn't have an assistant right now. Right. You know, like he's just always like, he he thinks he's like one of us. Like he just move around regular, and then it's like, ah. Oh, any boxes like yo, I'm about to go to Mace. Like, no, you're on tour. You can't go anywhere. You can't like, do, right. you know what I mean? So it's like, bro, everybody's done. And it's not just me. There's a lot of people in our camp that's done a million jobs. But um, that's like you learning all those jobs, and you also get to grow, and you get to like, cause it's it should always be just about the end goal. That's right. That's all it's about. It's about getting it done. That's so right. So it's like, damn, like like, <laughs> not on the off season we shooting a video of Cole was getting dressed, but we had to fly somewhere. So his stylist wasn't even there. And I remember he he looked at me like, damn. I hate to ask this, but yo, can I ask you for a favor? I'm like, what? Well, he's like, yo, can you steal my hoodie? I'm like, yeah, I got you. Like, And we just started laughing because it's like, to him it's like, damn, I'm still asking my nigga. I'm like, yeah, like, there's no stylist here, so we got to get it done. Yeah, just steam this shit. Like, I steam my clothes at home. I'm it's like, not a big deal. But, but even, but, you know, it's like, to me, it's funny because even in that moment, he was like, yeah, I got to ask Steam. Like, he's like, yo, who gives a f-? Like, I don't care. Are we shooting this video? All right, let's do let's it. Let's do like, it. Let's do it. Yeah, so.